Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master in the Word of God. Thank you for joining me as we continue this fascinating thought, this important biblical theme, the faithfulness of God. That is foundational to our faith. It is foundational for the universe, for the world. If God was not faithful, the creation would convert back into chaos. God, the Bible repeatedly teaches us, is a God that we can depend on to keep his word. God is faithful, which means that God sustains whatever God creates. It means that God does what God says and God finishes what God starts. God is a faithful God. Today, we wanna to look at the faithfulness of God when we are in trouble. When we're in trouble, now usually when we're in trouble, we often ask, God, where are you? The Bible says that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. But some of us have concluded that God is a very absent help in the time of trouble. God has promised not that we won't have trouble, but that God is faithful to keep us and sustain us in the midst of our trouble. Now, if you're not prepared for trouble, you're not prepared for life. You, Lena Horne, the great uh, singer, actress, Lena Horne made famous a song called Stormy Weather. And all of us will have some stormy weather. There was a soap opera many years ago, I think it, it was called the secret storm. And some of our stormy weather is quite public. People know it, but then some of us, it's a secret storm that no one knows about but us and God. It may be a secret health crisis. It may be a secret relational breakdown. Whatever it is, God is with us in the midst of our trouble. And the reason we have trouble is because we live in a world that is fallen. Our world is a sinful world. And Jesus did not promise that we as Christians would be exempt from trouble. To the contrary, he promised, hey, expect it. John chapter 16 and verse 33 reads, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So if you're in Christ, it's not that you won't have trouble, but Christ will help you to overcome the trouble that you're in, amen. But he did promise that you will have trouble. Back in the 90s, um, the problem I think with the church is that we drifted towards a very heretical teaching, which is called health, wealth, and prosperity. And it was the it was the teaching that if you believed in God, that you were exempted from sickness and poverty, that you only God only allows you to have health and wealth and prosperity. And that is a theology built on capitalism and greed that we impose on the Bible to justify our opulent uh, lifestyles. The Bible never promised that we would not have poverty and disease. Job had it, Job had disease. Paul had it, Paul was destitute, Paul died in jail. Our four parents, black people historically um, have been destitute and we still are uh, to a great degree, a poor group of people. W.E.B. Du Bois, who was the father of sociology said that there are poor whites in the white race, but black people, we are a poor race. So poverty is real, suffering is real, trouble is real. And if you believe that you won't have trouble just because you are a Christian, then you are holding God to promises God never made. You will have trouble. And if you're not ready for it, you're not ready for life. In fact, some of you will have trouble with your health. And even if you don't have trouble now, you will have health problems. You will get older. 
Things don't work the way they used to. You'll have knee problems, hip problems, back problems, all types of troubles. Troubles come. Trouble troubles you when you're not troubling trouble. Uh, you, some of you will have trouble on the job. I'm talking to somebody who's having some trouble on their job. I may be talking to somebody uh, right now uh, who just found out they had cancer. I'm praying for a good friend, a brother named the Reverend Clay Calloway, because his house caught on fire. It just caught on fire a couple of Saturdays ago. Trouble comes in our life, and you never know when trouble will come. It doesn't say ready or not, here it comes. You know, God knows when trouble comes because God is omniscient, but we don't know. Because if we knew, then we could schedule uh, our response to it would say, okay, September the 13th, I'm going, to, uh, I, I'm going to have an accident. I'm going to be in a car accident, so I need to get ready for it. But we don't know. So we don't have a way of kind of emotionally preparing ourselves for it. It just comes. But when it comes, please know that God has promised to be with you. Isaiah chapter 43, verses two and three is a wonderful promise. It says, if you go through deep waters, uh-oh, read that wrong. It doesn't say if, as though it may happen. It says when, which means inevitability. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, what does God promise? I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Please notice what it didn't say. It says when you go through these rivers of difficulty, it didn't say you won't get wet. You'll feel the wetness, but it won't drown you. It says when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt. Now, it doesn't say that you won't feel the heat. It just says you won't get burned up and the flames will not consume you. And the, I think the most important phrase in the whole verse, the promise of God is when you go through, he says that in verse two, when you go through rivers of difficulties, he says, when you walk through the fire. And the key is, is that it doesn't say you're going to stay in the fire. You're going to stay in the river of difficulty. It says you're going through. It's almost like what he says, yea, though I walk through the valley. It uh, doesn't say I'm going to park in the valley. It doesn't say I'm going to park in the river of difficulty. It doesn't say I'm going to park uh, in the fire of oppression. He says, I'm going through it. Or as the old folk used to say back in the day, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. This too shall pass. God will be with you. And because God is with you, that gives you the strength to handle it. In fact, Philippians chapter four and verse 13 says this, Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens me and empowers, empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confidence, confident peace. In other words, because God is with me, God gives me the strength to deal with it. And you know that's true because if somebody had told you that you were going to have to go through what you're going through, you would have said, there's no way I could make it. If this happens, I won't be able to take it Well, it happened. And you were able to take it and you were able to get through it and get beyond it because God gives you strength because God is with you. You can handle Listen carefully. You can handle anything that God allows to come in your life, regardless of how devastating it is. I'm thinking about a good friend right now, a wonderful woman whose daughter was tragically shot um, a week or so ago, and it is devastating. And my prayers are with that family whom I love so much uh, because of their wonderful young, beautiful daughter who was snuffed, whose life was snuffed out by a senseless um, act of violence. How do you get through something like that? That's trouble. How do you get through it? You get through it with the power of God. And the good news, here's something as I close that you need to remember. 
is God only gives you strength when you need it. So when you say, well, how am I going to make it? Well, when it happens, when the breakdown happens, that's when God gives you strength. God doesn't give you Thursday strength on Wednesday. God gives you Thursday strength to meet Thursday. And God would not give you Friday strength on Thursday. God will give you Friday strength on Friday. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25 says this. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. In other words, whatever the day is, God is promising, hallelujah, to give you strength to meet the demands of that day. God will only give you thirsty strength when thirsty comes. You talk about the faithfulness of God. This is how you know God is faithful. Not that God keeps us from trouble, but God is with us in our trouble so that when we go through the river, yes, we'll get wet, but we won't drown. When we go through the fire, yes, we will feel the heat and think we're losing our mind, but we won't be burned up and we won't be concerned. And the key is we'll get through it. Don't ever let the devil convince you that your present situation is permanent. You will get through it. This too shall pass. Let's pray together. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the assurance of your word, your faithfulness to be with us in the time of trouble. As our days are, so shall our strength be. Give us this day our daily bread, just enough strength to get through today. Bless all who are hurting and give them strength to meet those hurts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, everybody needs to be in fellowship with other believers. So I invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. Love to hear from you. Well, I hope you have a blessed day the rest of the day. And until we can meet again tomorrow, well, don't forget during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.